Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags and Metal Reviews and today we're getting our final review of Call the Devil by Mushroom Head. So, we're back on the Mushroom Head train and we've been listening to this album as much as we possibly could. And I'm curious to know what TV Fish thinks after a week of listening. So I'm going to pass the floor over. I've got a lot of stuff to say myself, mm. but I, I just want to know what you have to say because there's a lot of interesting things happening here. And we had a bit of a similar first impressions where we were kind of like, does this really sound like Mushroom Head? And I don't know, I don't know. Well, to, to start off, I guess, let's answer that question after listening to this album for a week. Does it sound like Mushroom Head? For me, the answer is yes. I, I felt that maybe it was because of the singles and I kind of felt that way throughout listening to this album throughout the week. I feel like they could have chosen better singles. I don't think that the ones that they chose perfectly encapsulate the Mushroom Head soul as much as it exists in other songs on this album. Okay. And, but what works about them as singles is that they have catchy hooks. And that's one of the biggest things about this album that I noticed. It plays hooky so much. But it wins more often than not. I found there were a lot of hooks and a lot of um, melodies that were catchy, that were kind of getting stuck in my head, and that I was liking. Uh, one song that surprised me was We Don't Care. Um, that song, when I first heard it and first listened to it, you know, in our first impressions and even early on, I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really feel, it's, the song's whatever. Like, it just kind of yeah. comes and goes like, I, I, ironically, I don't care. But, as it went, I started humming along to that song and singing the chorus, and I, I actually started having a lot more fun with it. It was surprising. I had a weird relationship with that song, too. I was really drawn to Jackie's, like, southern drawl. Like, she's yeah. got like, a southern twang in her voice. And for me, like, the first half of the song is like, man, but the second half of the song is really good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy crap. Like, And that made it worth playlist for me. Like, it's just weird how that can work out. Mm -hmm. So weird, yeah, weird relationship, but yeah, cool. So honestly, and I know they did drop it as a single. Like they drop, like usually bands, they'll drop singles to hype up for the album, then they'll drop like an album release single, mm -hmm. like as soon as it drops. They did that with this song. I think this would have been possibly an even better song just as like one of the hype up singles. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. feel like it's catchy enough, it has some of that spirit in there, but it's just overall better. Which one? Um, we don't care over the, the singles that they actually chose. Yeah, which, like, one, which ones were those? Fall in so Line, Fall in Line, and Prepackaged. Right. Just those two. And we reacted to both of those, and we were both concerned about... Well, I didn't mind Fall in Line as much when we checked that out. It's Prepackaged, we both kind of felt... Yeah. And both of those songs, I feel like, have good hooks. But other than that, I'm not really huge on them. And I feel like there's a lot better on this album than those two songs. And I'll talk about another song that I think could have been a single. Eye to Eye. Now I said last week that this song sounds a lot like 1200. You can still make the case for that. It, it, there are similarities and comparisons, but I got to a point where it hit me and I thought, you know what? This is just a hype song. I love the initial riff before it starts, like right after that little whatever intro with that, I don't know, commercial. Yeah. <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> after that, the, the guitar riff as the drum, as the, it's just the snare drum. I love that riff, and I, whiff, I wish <laughs> that riff was developed further um, in, a, in a bit of a different manner, but it doesn't really matter because the song was just hype. Like, I listened to that song like, yeah, this is kick-ass. Like, yeah, I can feel the spirit of Mushroom Head through this song. It, sure, it might sound a little bit like another one, but it didn't really bother me much anymore the more I listened to that song. And I feel like that would have been a sick single. Imagine if we checked that out and reacted to that song with a music video, I would have been like, holy shit, this is sick. Like, this gets me excited. Like, they got some spark. For me, Eye to Eye was actually one of the weaker songs on the album. So I think oh. I would have a, a really different perspective uh, about that. What so, made it weak? It just, it, it wasn't, it didn't do anything for me. You know, there's songs that like, you try to give it a chance over and over again, nothing. and it's just there's nothing there, there's no spark. So yeah. there was a, a couple songs on this album that did that for me, and that was one of them. So I'm really surprised that you liked it so much considering it's one of my weakest, maybe even the weakest song for me <laughs> on the album as far as, you know, yeah, it, it, that's a really weird thing. Well, let's talk about a song that I can probably assume is top tier for both of us. It's still my number one 
that kind of tells you what it is. Grand Gesture. Ah, uh, yeah. My favorite song on this album. It was my favorite in our first impressions. It is still my favorite today. Beautiful. That's one easy, easy way to describe this song. Yeah. It has the heart and poetry that Mushroom Head is known for. Mm -hmm. And Steve's vocals on this song are incredible. Nailed but you it. know what? They're incredible on the whole record. I think he's a great singer, and I think he sounds great on this album. I agree. Like, he killed it with this performance. And Steve's the one who is doing the Jeffrey Nothing the, type of yeah. voice. Yeah. He, he was the replacement for when okay. Jeffrey Nothing left the band. Um, the song has a lot of weight to it when the full band comes in and out. You've got the guitars in the bridge. There's this dominant chord they hit right before the singing starts at the beginning, and that's part of the form as well. I love that every single time. Like, oh, there it is. Let's go. So it's just every time. It's, it's the kind of song I'm always looking forward to hearing. Yeah. Like every time, like, yeah, Grand Jester, here we go. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Grand Jester is super good. And I think I mentioned this last week. It reminds me of Never Let It Go, which is one of my favorite Mushroom Head songs from the older albums. And, you know, it really just, it really just uh, scratches that itch. And it almost feels like a spiritual successor in a way. Very well performed. It's got a lot of the same, a lot of the same sim or similar motifs that they're using. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, man, all, all, great song on this album for sure. Definitely top tier on this album. Now that song is followed by Hallelucination, which I think hits extra hard as a follow up to that song. Mm -hmm. um, it goes back and forth with quiet parts and then hard hitting full band parts, which um, kind of remind me of, I believe, Numb by uh, Disturbed. That makes sense. You can hear that. Not in my head right now, but I, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you'll you'll see. Yeah. If you, if you like, listen to it back and forth. You can get the references. Like you'll you'll get the, the you'll get the kind of the parallel there, where it's yeah. like you got the quiet thing, and then bam, band just comes in with a sledgehammer for sure. Uh, one funny thing I wanted to mention: there's a song called Yui Up, a final reprieve. It took a bit, and then I kind of realized. I like how you pronounce it as Yui Up. I would just say U I O P, but Yui yeah. Up. <laughs> well, here's part of why I call it Yui Up, because it's just the second half of the keyboard. Because they did QWERTY, Qwerty on right just in the right. butterfly. So if you just look at the rest of the keyboard, it goes QWERTY Yui Up. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just the other half of the keyboard there. Yeah. Now. Sonically, it doesn't really sound that much like it has relation to QWERTY, but I thought that was pretty funny that they basically made, at least title-wise, a sequel song. And yeah. QWERTY's a great song, so... Um, it would have been cool if it had more reference to QWERTY, but, I mean, I do think um, it's a fine song. Like, mm. it's not... You know, it does the job. I don't, like, love it, love it, but it's it's generally pretty fun. Like, that and Decomposition are both kind of similar with the kind of theatrical-sounding um, song. And yeah. I feel like Decomposition is a good showcase of Steve's vocal range. Um, and it's, all, he's also, it's also just a Steve-focused song, and he sounds great, as I already mentioned. Mm. Um, I like decomposition because it has that six eight like waltz groove to it. Yeah, that's the thing that sets it apart, makes it unique. But even with that said, it's that's another one of my weaker songs on this album. Mm -hmm. That kind of just kept coming. I go, I kept going. There's not much here for me to actually latch on to, and mm -hmm. I don't like songs like that. But you can, I mean, at least there's something notable about it. But that's fair. I know I mentioned this song last week. Uh, Emptiness is still a pretty nice song, but what kind of gets me with that song is there's this really nice soft guitar solo in it. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. Every time it comes on, it's like, wow, that's, that's so nice. And it, it's cool to have that kind of range of, you know, we can put in this guitar solo that's just totally smooth mm -hmm. and have it still feel powerful. Because obviously in metal music, you always come to expect crazy, shreddy, ridiculous solos. A lot of the time, yeah. So it's a nice change up from what you'd kind of naturally expect right. for the nature of the music. Right. So. I like that, but what are your general thoughts on the album? So, my feelings were a bit all over the place. Uh, you know, it started the week a little bit rocky, and you know, we had, we had our concerns. Does this sound like Mushroom Head? Is this the, the Mushroom Head that I, that I grew to love back in the day, 20-something years ago? And you know, the more the week went on, the more I started to agree with TV Fish and go, yes, it does sound like Mushroom Head. There's a lot of stuff here that sounds like it's pulled right from the first couple albums. and. Uh, you know, that started, you know, qu like softening some of my worries and things started to grow on me and things started to really stand out. And I was like, holy crap, this, there's something here. There's something really good here. So like you mentioned, Grand Gesture was great right off the bat. 
That's probably the only song that I listened to and went, okay, this one's already a hit. Like, I don't even have to consider this one anymore. It's a, it's a banger right at the beginning. It's just great. Yeah. But then, other things started really tickling my fancy and really started getting into my ear hole. So tracks like uh, UIOP, um, this one, it has just a really low, punchy tempo vibe. It just has a vibe to it. And it's got a bit of that silly clown circus. You you said you used the word um, theatrical. Theatrical is that kind of thing. I said it's something. It might be something like Avatar would write. I felt the same about decomposition. Um, but it has it has the psycho strike, which is that wheat wheat sound in it. I don't know. You know, in the psycho, and I go wheat wheat wheat. Oh, I call it the psycho strike. The so a lot of a lot, like of, a lot of a lot of a lot of bands use that or variations of that. Mm -hmm. So that one grew on me a lot. It's one of those songs that when it hits big, it really really sounds good. Right. Then there's um, I, we mentioned we don't care already. That one grew on me because the second half just kept getting it was very infectious. Um, Torn in two, which is a song you didn't mention yet. That's towards the end of the album. Uh, this one also grew on me, and I really like the part where they're screaming, "Fear the bloodshed." And at first I thought he was saying "Fear the butcher," which I thought was kind of cool. But then I looked it up. It's "Fear the bloodshed." Either way, both sound cool. To be honest. Either way, they both sound cool. But either way, it's just gnarly. Just the, when they're screaming that part, it's gnarly. And um, this song just got really good energy. There's some nice double bass, some uh, some nice plucky bass lines. Um, just some cool stuff going on. On top of that, we have. Uh, I just want to mention one part about Hollow Hallucination, even though you covered it already. After the deaf, dumb, and blind part during the bridge. There's this like, it sounds to me like just dry violin, like violin with nothing on it. Oh yeah. And it's just like, or like stiff strings or something like, I don't to know. To me, it sounded more like a guitar with an effect on it. It probably is, cause they don't play violin in this. It might even be just like something on the synth maybe, I don't, I'm not sure, but whatever that is, it's fucking cool. And I just cool. liked it every time it came on. I really like that, really cool stuff. It's also one of those songs that really Sounds it has that mushroom head feeling because it's got Jackie singing the lyrics with Scott screaming in the background, mm -hmm. which is very reminiscent of Jeff singing the lyrics with J Man screaming in the background. Yeah. It's just a little bit of a more, I guess, modern or twist on it. It's just that layering is what they're known for. Exactly. And the more they do that, it's just an extra thing that makes their song so interesting. And it's also an extra thing that makes them sound like Mushroom Head. Yeah. Right? That's like something that's part of their sound. And if you can notice those types of things, you're going to start going, oh, yeah, it really does sound like them. Mm -hmm. Um, so with all that said, the song that grew on me the most though, and this is this song crept up probably to maybe my favorite track, maybe second close behind Grand Gesture, and that's Emptiness. And I know you mentioned this song already, but this song has the best vocals by Steve on the album. I think he really sounds like Jeff in this, he really nails it. I really like how the piano melody kind of carries the, the melody in the background, but it's got this crunchy riff over topping it. Another, another thing that's very, a very Mushroom Head-esque type of thing to have the pianos being very soft melodically but having crunchy riffs accenting them that's another thing that i really like just gives it that right amount of uh, of aggression and it just it also has a bit of like like jazziness to it there's like i don't know there's a lot going on you mentioned the soft guitar solo overall this very beautiful song super well performed i really like the vocals on that one they really really stand out and uh, another one that you know grew on me that we haven't actually mentioned yet also is Shame in a Basket. So mm. Shame in a Basket's a long song. It's eight eight minutes and twenty two seconds, and you know it, it it goes through a bunch of different things. It starts off with some nature noises, sounds like grasshoppers or something like that at, at night, like chirping or whatever. Some something something's going on like that. But you get some harmonized vocals with some piano and some synth noises. Um, then, then eventually, you know, the band comes in with full support of the vocals and you get guitars and drums kick in and it goes back to quiet parts and it feels kind of doomy and it's kind of going on a bit of a roller coaster like this, right? And one thing that I liked about this song is that it made me curious to look into the lyrics and that is something that doesn't happen with me yeah, very, very often. You. Yeah, I'm not, I, I always say that I don't really care about lyrics too much, but this is why I looked into it because the parts I was catching were... Uh, you know, intriguing me. So I looked into it. Obviously, a lot of lyrics are interpretive, especially for Mushroom Head, because they're very poetic. They're never to the point. They're, they're kind of uh, very ambiguous with their wording. That's another really cool thing about this band, is it that is. they are so poetic with their lyricism that it's like you read it and it really gets you thinking, like, wow, this is really interesting stuff 
exactly. like what does it mean, and just like, you know, it's, it kind of takes you by surprise given the sound of some of the music. That's right. And, you know, this is a song, uh, Shame in a Basket, that you could probably take multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking at the lyrics, and I can, I can attribute it to multi multiple different possible things. But what I think it's actually about is... People are going to laugh at the way I said about because I'm Canadian. <laughs> about. What I think it's about is um, basically fighting, a back against, fighting back against abusive authorities. Like basically like, you know, you know, a lot of people in America hate cops because of all the police brutality that goes on in America. I think this is a song that's about that. And they're basically saying like like shame in a basket is is shame in the police force and that kind of thing. If you listen to the lyrics you can kind of match up those things and and make it about that, which I think is an interesting topic and it's a it's powerfully powerful performance from the band because yeah. it's got it, it does that wave where it just I don't know it hits the right way I, I just really like the song it grew on me a lot too I especially like the ending of that song like the all oh, that you'll never know yeah like that whole thing and they do it like the never let it go thing where yeah, they do it and then they stop that. and then they bring it back and they bring it back it goes it keeps going and you think it's ending and it keeps yeah. going and that's similar to never let it go it's an example of a motif that they borrowed from their previous work and re reinvented it again so I really liked that part the rest of the song is like fine it wasn't really like incredible but that part is what I looked forward to from that song fair and you know it's a good closer if it was the closer. It's not. Yeah, you got Doom Goose at the end for what Let's reason? Talk about Doom Goose. What is the reason? Because I'm still wondering. So Doom Goose is like about two something, two minutes long or something like that. I it's, thought it was like one minute. It's like, I don't even know, one or two like, minutes. I think it's like 2.20 or something like that. Either that way, long, I don't know. what happens to Doom Goose? Um, I mean, it, it. I think it's interesting. I think it builds up. That's the problem. This, the Doom Goose builds up and then it ends. But to me, if you're gonna build up, you want that to be an intro track. Doomgo should have been the intro to the album, not the outro. You know, that would have worked a bit better. I mean, it's just some kind of symphonic stuff, builds up, there's some quacking, and that's it. Yeah. So like, this is how the album ends, not with a bang, but with a quack. Like, it's weird. It was a weird creative I, choice. And the way, the way Shame in a Basket ends would have been a great way to end the album. That exactly. would have been fine. That would like, have been fine. I feel like... Doom the, Goose was an odd choice, for it, sure. It was a misstep, because that song would come on and I just wouldn't care. I'd be like, you know, the it, the kind of build-up thing is kind of cool, but it's like, why is this here? Every time it came on, why is this here? Shame in a Basket's a cool way to end it. They didn't end it with that. Doom Goose would have been a little bit better as an intro track, but it wouldn't have been an intro track that I would have loved. It would have been an intro track where I'm like, yeah, this is kind of neat, and then I'd probably start skipping it so I could get to eye to eye. Yeah. So, it would be better functionally as an intro track, yeah. but in general, why is it here? It's just kind of just... You can say that with a lot of interlude type of tracks on albums, but... Yeah, but when it's done right, it when it's feels right. proper and it feels like it belongs and that it adds to the experience. For me, I th as an interlude track, I actually liked Doom Goose. I thought it was fine listening. It's just the placement of it that I didn't like. So I kind of noticed that a little bit about pacing and placement with this album that, you know, you kind of have like UEOP as a break. <laughs> UIOP. <laughs> and then after that you got prepackaged, but then after that you got decomposition, which is kind of similar to UEOP. We mentioned prepackaged a minute ago, or did we talk about prepackaged yet? You said you- I mentioned that I wasn't really huge you on it huge outside on it. of the hook. I wanted to just point out that I was huge on it. That's actually oh. another top song for maybe top like, Three. Maybe I We're like three. opposites on this We're album. We're like opposites on this album. It's weird. <laughs> well, the stuff that you really liked, I didn't. But the stuff I really liked, you didn't. But it's not like I liked it and you didn't, or vice versa. We both liked things, just not it's the just same thing. The op like inverse things. Prepackers is this is like a groove metal song in a lot of ways. It's there's parts of the song that remind me of Machine Head, and I'm like, holy crap, that really sounds like something like Machine Head would do. And then there's parts in it that. Um, there's parts in it that remind me of like septic flesh. Like it had like some like orchestral or symphonic type of stuff happening. I'm like, holy crap, this is this is wild. This is pretty cool. So I don't know. That's a song that I thought was really cool too. I don't know. It just it kind of like I know I I answered the question at the beginning of this review. Yes, it sounds like Motorhead. That song doesn't really feel as in character to me. I still liked the the chorus. Fair. I enjoyed that, but like the rest Fair. of it, I was just like kind of whatever on. Fair. Um, but uh, yeah, so I kind of felt that a bit of the pacing was weird because then, you know, you had prepackaged, then decomposition, 
and then Grand Jester as the soft song in the middle. But then after Grand Jester, you kind of just have heavy hitters until the ending, which is like the big emotional ending. So it kind of felt the pacing was a little bit weird, but overall, it was still kind of a collection of enjoyable tracks. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, let's get a rating this album. And I guess I'll start by saying I realized something throughout listening to this album because we talked a lot in our first impressions about does it sound like Mushroom Head? I don't know if this is the Mushroom Head that I love, but I don't think it's fair to keep comparing this album and today's Mushroom Head to early 2000s, 90s, even mid 2000s Mushroom Head. In a way it is, in a way it isn't. I can agree and disagree. In some that. aspects, yes, the band is similar. Skinny's kind of like the main guy and he's because always been there. Always. Exactly. He's the anchor. But a lot of the personnel has changed so much around him that it's not the exact same band. This is not the band that made those first three and then Double X and 13 right. and all that. Yeah. It's just not that. It's not like Skinny's the only thing that makes this sound. There's, no. There's tons of members in this band. Yeah. They all do their part. So this album has a lot of fun stuff in it. And I feel like if you can get your head out of the early 2000s and kind of just sit down with it for what it is and kind of the feeling that is Mushroom Head, this album hits that. I do feel like there were missteps here and there though. Some songs could have maybe been reworked or maybe I'd remove one or two, but it still has the spirit. That being said, it barely did not meet the mark for a toe tag for me. It gets a 7.5, which is a shame because I really enjoyed this album. And you know what? It's still a good score. For reference, a toe tag on our channel is a score of eight and higher. I've yeah. seen people be upset about scores of seven for music, for video games and stuff. In our eyes, seven is like good, like seven solid. So 7.5 means it's really on that doorstep. Just and didn't with, make it. With our new kind of way of rating albums for ourselves, it unfortunately just didn't make it for me. It's a yeah. shame, but I still enjoyed the album quite a bit. Yeah, uh, you know, the album for me has uh, a, a few duds on it but it also has a lot of really good stuff going for it. A lot of memorable stuff, a lot of stuff that kind of took me back and really made me reappreciate this band. And that's a good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to say that with uh, these members, you know, these some of them new, some of them newer, some of them not as new, but I'm, I'm happy for, you know, people like Jackie and Steve and, and, and even Scott to be able to kind of replicate the sound that made me like this band, right? Mm -hmm. And give me some of that flavor that really, you know, made me a fan. I will say that, you know, Steve steals the show, Jackie's really good. Scott does a fine job, but he's not quite there when it comes to the J-Man stuff. He gets the job done. Gets the job done, but there's, yeah, he's like, if, if, if you're gonna say who's the weakest link, it would be him, and I, that's really not even nice to say, but I just think there's some room, room for improvement there. But either way, it's not like it ruins it or anything like that. But there's just a lot of stuff going for this album. I like the riffs, there's a lot of creativity. We talked about poetic lyrics. Um, you know, there's great drum parts, different types of vibes and tempos and signatures and all these types of things going on. So with all of that said, uh, based on my scoring of each song, I landed in toe tag territory. Oh. So it's gonna get a toe tag for me. And it's just, I mean, we say this all the time, it's a shame when one gives a toe tag and the other's so close, because it's not gonna make the list, but it's right, there. it's right there, it's right on the doorstep. And a similar thing happened to the last album, because I gave the last album a toe tag as well, and you gave it a six, I think, which I is think also yeah. six or 6.5, which is also not 6. a horrible 5. score. And, you know, it's, it's like, what do we, like, I mean, XX is on the toe tag list because we did yeah, a we double did a, X's. Yeah, we did a, a, we did, we uh, a follow back review like, way back. Yeah, we did. That was like early ago. 2018. We reviewed that. And that was, I guess, a pretty easy two toe tag album. We both yeah. love that. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, either way, I think this was a great album. Um, I'm going to look forward to listening to it again when we do our year end uh, re listens because we listen to basically everything all over again towards the end of the year so we can generate our top five albums of the year. It gets hectic. It gets hectic and crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting this in a few months to see how I feel about it then. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, anyways, that's it for this video. So leave your thoughts down below and let us know what you guys think of this album after a week of listening to it. And subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Keep those heads banging.